Our call to worship this morning is a musical offering from Tom Colden, Gretchen Noon, Mary Snorick, and me, Pastor Nate, as we sing together, O God, our help in ages past. We prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. And good morning once again. Welcome to the 11th Sunday after Pentecost radio broadcast of Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Wadena, Minnesota. Today's radio broadcast is sponsored by Leroy and Donna Christine in honor of their 68th wedding anniversary, which is today, August 16th. Congratulations, Leroy and Donna. Happy anniversary to you today. May God continue to bless your love and faithfulness. And thank you for making this ministry possible today. The joyful sound, the bells of Emmanuel, are sponsored today by John and Ann Pate. Thank you, John and Ann. Today, Jesus has a peculiar interaction with a Canaanite woman who is seeking healing for her child. And we will unpack that a little later in our radio hour together. A couple of announcements. Uh, First, a really big one. We've set a date to resume public worship inside our church building. September 13th will begin a four-week cycle of worship services in our sanctuary. For now, until we can gauge interest in in in-building worship, we're asking you to pick one of those four Sundays to attend. Because of the need to socially distance, we can only accommodate a limited number of people, so please call the church office, or visit wadinaemmanuel.org to indicate your intention to attend September 13th, September 20th, September 27th, or October 4th at 8.30 a.m. We thank you for your continued patience as Emmanuel tries to balance our desire for worshiping in our building with the desire to keep one another as safe as possible. We've also scheduled another parking lot service two weeks from today on August 30th at 9.30 a.m. This one will have the option of attending in a camp chair or in your car. So join us August 30th at 9.30 a.m. for a parking lot service. 
A continued note about masks. Please note that masks are required in our church building. And uh, we continue uh, under the governor's mandate, whenever you are in a public place, uh, indoors, you need to wear a mask. Or even when you're outdoors and socially distancing isn't possible. Uh, You can stop by the church and pick up a mask or an extra one. We even have some right inside the parking lot door. And again, we continue to thank you for doing your part to keep each other as safe as possible. Uh, If you'd like a communion visit in the coming weeks, please be in touch with the church office to get that set up. We would like to make sure that as we are resuming the practice of Holy Communion, that we include everyone if possible, including those for whom venturing out is too risky. So ideally, we could set up something where we could visit outdoors, like on a porch or a patio, but we'll figure that out together. So again, please be in contact with me, Pastor Nate, or call the church office and we'll, we'll get this figured out. We keep on encouraging you. Head to our website, wadinaemmanuel.org. That is the hub for staying connected with us at this time. You can learn more about Emmanuel House Church, a very exciting new small group ministry, how to join a safety team uh, so that when we are resuming public worship, uh, we can make those as safe as possible. You can learn about our latest devotional offerings on YouTube, how to stay connected with our latest news and information through Facebook or email or Remind. So again, go to wadinaemmanuel.org to learn the details. For our music today, we've reached back into the vault and uh, found some hymns from our recordings from about a year ago uh, during our worship services. And so our opening hymn is number 834 in your ELW hymnals, Immortal, Invisible God, Only Wise, uh, ELW number 834. We join together in the prayer of the day. God of all peoples, your arms reach out to embrace all those who call upon you. Teach us as disciples of your Son to love the world with compassion and constancy, that your name may be known throughout the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. 
Our anthem this morning is the Sanctuary Choir singing, Go Ye Into the World. everyone. I've got my friend Princess Piggly here today. That's Miss Piggy's cousin. Uh, they look a lot alike, but uh, this is Princess Piggly. And uh, good to have you with us today, Princess Piggly. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm no good. Oh, you're no good. What's wrong? I am getting very worried about school. I'm going to school this fall and I've got all my usual worries. Will people like me? Will they think I look funny? Will my teacher be nice? But now I've got more worries that make me even more no good. Oh, well, Princess Piggly, what are those other worries? Well, I heard I have to wear a mask all day and that I wonder if I'll get in trouble if I stand too close to one of my friends. Social distancing, no good. Oh, well, Princess Piggly, I, I, I really feel badly for how worried you are, and I, I can totally appreciate how worried you are. It's, 
so often really worrying when we have to do things that we're not used to and new experiences? Yeah, that would be really scary. Yeah, it's no good. Yeah, that does sound no good. But you know, we're going to hear a story today from our Bibles. Oh, the Bible is so good. It is. Yeah, we're going to hear a story about a woman who has some real trouble. Was she worried about school? No, she she wasn't worried about school, but she was really worried about her daughter. Her daughter was very, very sick. And she comes to Jesus. She'd never met Jesus before. And so she was nervous meeting him, but she knew that Jesus could heal her daughter. And so she went to Jesus. And at first, Jesus doesn't listen to her. Oh, that's no good. Yeah, and I'm not sure what to make of that story. I think maybe Jesus was testing her. But she persisted. She per what now? Yeah, she, she persisted. It means she kept at it, right? She didn't take no for an answer. She loved her daughter so much that she kept asking Jesus to take care of her daughter until Jesus saw her faith and he said, I'll give you what you want. And he made her daughter well. Oh, that's, that's so good. It is so good. And I, I think that story reminds us that we should be persistent. You mean I should keep bugging God? Well, sort of. But I think what I mean is, Princess Piggly, you are amazing. And you can do amazing things. I just know that when school starts this fall, you can do it. Right? It's going to be super different, but you can do it. But what if I can't? Well, when you can't, then I want you to keep asking your family for help. And I want you to keep asking your teachers for help. And I want you to keep asking God for help. Because God always gives us what we need. Oh, that's so good! It is so good. Thank, thank you so much for being here today, Princess Piggly. I'm going to be praying for you in this challenging time. And we're going to trust God But we're going to keep asking, keep praying, and also keep trying to be the kind of person that you can help your friends too. So thank you very much for being here and being part of this special day. We'll see you next time. Our first reading on this 11th Sunday after Pentecost is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 56. Verses 1 and verses 6 through 8. In this reading, the prophet calls upon Israel to do justice in view of God's imminent intervention to save. Righteousness and obedience define who belongs to the Israelite community, not race, nationality, or any other category. Isaiah chapter 56, verse 1 and verses 6 through 8 from the NRSV translation. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. Skipping to verse 6. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord, and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it, and hold fast my covenant, These I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God who gathers the outcasts of Israel, I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 67. If you have a hymnal at home, please find Psalm 67 in the front of your hymnals, preceding the hymn section, and read the indented sections with me. Psalm 67. May God be merciful to us and bless us. May the light of God's face shine upon us. Let your way be known upon earth. 
your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide all the nations on earth. Let the people praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth its increase. God, our own God, has blessed us. May God give us blessing. And may all the ends of the earth stand in awe. Our second reading this morning is from Romans chapter 11, verses 1 through 2a, and verses 29 through 32. In this reading, we learn that God has not rejected Israel. Rather, the call and gifts of God are irrevocable, so that while all have been disobedient, God has mercy upon all. Romans 11, verses 1 through 2a, and verses 29 through 32, from the NRSV translation. Paul writes, I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people, whom he foreknew. Skipping now to verse 29. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now been disobedient in order that by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience, so that he may be merciful to all. Word of God. Word of life. Thanks be to God. A reading from Matthew, chapter 15, verses 21 through 28. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. These are your words, O Lord. Your word is the truth. Lead us into the truth. Amen. The wheels screeched. The mother's heart stopped. The child screamed. The mother ran out into the street in front of the house as fast as she could. She was scared spitless when she saw the tricycle and her daughter lying on the pavement. That's the way mothers are. That's the way fathers are. Anytime your child is injured, anytime your child is sick, you become very, very upset, especially if the child is seriously ill or seriously Injured. That's just the way God has wired us as mothers and fathers. You can tell your stories, and I can tell my stories about illnesses and injuries. When our son Eshetu was younger, he was an accident waiting to happen. 
And I remember many occasions him smashing his head and getting a huge goose egg or a fat lip. And on several occasions, we had to take him to the emergency room for a CAT scan to make sure that his little brain wasn't hurt. As a parent, you just sort of hold your breath until the doctor says, he's okay. When Amsala had her first open heart surgery way back when she was one, I remember the moment they took her ventilator tube out and and she needed to start breathing on her own. And I thought when they did that, she'd take this big breath and just start crying, right? But she didn't. She wasn't breathing. And neither was I, right? It felt like minutes, but they finally got her to start breathing again. Most of us have stories of harrowing experience with, with kids that are hurt or ill, and, and, we, and we bring them to the doctor hoping that they'll have something to make them better. All we want is for them to get better. Right? So we can understand this story for today because we find a woman who was upset, so deeply upset, because her daughter is so very, very sick. And we are drawn into the story when we hear what happens between this woman and Jesus, right? Jesus, now in this story, is in a non-Jewish territory in the district of Tyre and Sidon when he is approached by this Canaanite woman. Now, you have to understand that Matthew's use of the word Canaanite is supposed to tell the reader what kind of woman this is, or at least the kind of woman they think she is, right? Canaanites did not worship the same God as the Hebrews, as, as the Jews. Their, their cultic and pagan practices, the Canaanite cultic and pagan practices of worshiping fertility gods, their use of temple prostitutes to coax their God to similarly fertilize the earth would, would gross you out, at the least. But even so, This is still a human being who approaches Jesus and she asks for help. And not help for herself, right? It's for her daughter. Her daughter, Scripture says, is possessed by a demon. I don't know what that means exactly, but she had some terrible illness, whether that's epilepsy or or, or some other ailment that the Bible describes as being demon-possessed. And like any mother, any mother... She just wants to see her daughter made well again. And so she approaches Jesus and calls him the son of David. This one who is known for healing. This one who has wandered into her territory. And she begs him for mercy. But he did not answer her at all, says Matthew. This one we call the son of God does not even have the decency to answer her. He he just ignores her. Jesus only speaks when he's addressed by his disciples. When they cannot stand this woman's crying anymore, they say, Jesus, will you just give her what she wants so she quits bothering us already? But Jesus says, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. He doesn't even talk right to her. He addresses his disciples. And then, and then when this woman kneels before him and says, Lord, help me, he calls her a dog unworthy of the children's food. Not Jesus' finest moment, to be sure. In fact, like I said before, the story, well, it, it makes Jesus kind of come off sounding like a jerk. Huh? But the story really begs this question. Exactly how human do you want Jesus to be? We confess that Jesus is the Word of God made flesh. We confess that Jesus is God in human form. But how human are you willing to let Jesus be? It's hard enough to imagine God in Mary's womb emerging covered in embryonic fluid. It's it's hard enough to imagine God needing to be toilet trained, right? Or belching after meals, passing gas as many times a day as you or I. But could Jesus have been so human that he was capable of this kind of rudeness, insensitivity, even 
bigotry. Whew, that's a tough one. I have to admit that there's a big part of me that doesn't want Jesus to be quite that human. I want to brush past this story. I want to chalk it up as a story of Jesus, knowing that ultimately he'd heal this woman, but he just needed to test her faith. Huh? Or maybe test his disciples or something. I don't know. I, I, I want to get back to stories of Jesus walking on water and feeding thousands with meager portions. I want, I want to get back to Jesus where he heals and teaches and loves and, and amazes because those stories give me a glimpse of Jesus' divinity. Yeah, but a, a big part of me doesn't want Jesus to be this human. I don't want him to be quite this much like me and my fellow citizens of this world. But then there is this big part of me that cannot resist a Jesus that's this human. There is a part of me that knows this is how I am. Rude, maybe even on my best days. Insensitive, bigoted on my worst. I know how Many days I am indifferent to the needs of others. And if you're courageous enough, you'll admit that too. We need Jesus to be this human so he can really save us from our sins. I need Jesus to be this human and still rise from death by the power of Almighty God so I know he can really promise me the same. But more than that, when we're able to confess Jesus to being this human and not just a a divine being who knew exactly what his ministry would look like beforehand, then this story becomes utterly amazing. If we allow ourselves to believe that Jesus was so human he was actually capable of changing his mind, this story becomes more than a play or just a, a clever ruse or some divine test. It becomes the story of an unlikely outsider actually changing Jesus' mind and altering the course of his ministry. This woman, with her humility and persistence, owns the label of dog that Jesus puts on her. She only asks for crumbs from the table. The same that any other dog would get. She is confident that even the crumbs from this amazing healer will be enough to heal her daughter. And Jesus, upon seeing the faith of this outsider, changes his mind. And he gives her what she wants. Not just to get rid of her, but because of her extraordinary faith. And I believe that this moment affects Jesus deeply. I believe that this encounter with this persistent, humble woman affects Jesus profoundly. At the end of Matthew's Gospel, when Jesus has risen from the dead and appears to his disciples and sends them out as messengers, where does he send them? He says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. I have to believe that this woman's persistent, humble faith has in part led Jesus to open his saving act now to all the world. And this time the world isn't getting crumbs. It's getting the whole meal deal. Everything that Jesus is and has is now extended to the whole world. Right? And so my question to you today is this. How might your faithfulness affect God today? How might your persistent, humble faith affect affect the course of Christ Jesus' church? How might you be compelled to pray, to lobby, to beg God for mercy, love, and healing for yourself and someone you love? Or to be an advocate for someone you don't even know, someone you don't even like, Someone you have been taught to hate? How might you be led to be persistent on behalf of someone that society has shunned and cast out for one reason or another? And how might that persistent advocacy change the course of human history? 
Now, I want to be clear here. I'm not suggesting that God is standing up somewhere withholding blessings and love until someone with enough faith comes along and and pries it out of his hands, right? I believe that we worship a God who is abundantly gracious and merciful, who gives things to us even before we ask. And the prayers we offer aren't, aren't like some combination to a safe that will open with just the right twists and turns. But what I am saying is this. The life we live in relationship with God and with one another is not just some scripted story. It's not some play with a predestined outcome. God truly listens to our prayers and responds to them. Christ Jesus is responsive to our pleas and continues to be influenced by our faithfulness. This story from Matthew 15, as well as so many stories from Scripture, supports this. God has chosen, he has chosen to be in such relationship with his people that he actually listens and allows himself to be influenced by them and to do something different. And there's no doubt in my mind that your prayers, your pleas, your persistent, humble faith on behalf of someone you love will be heard by God. And your humble faith has the potential to not only offer, not only alter life for the one on whose behalf you pray, it has the potential to change the course of ministry in Jesus' name. So come to this Jesus today, my friends. Come in humility. Come with faith. Come with persistent hope. For who knows, maybe your faith will alter the course of God's people. It certainly wouldn't be the first time, would it? Amen. We are the church, the body of our Lord. We are all God's children, and we have been restored. I love that song and the chance we had to share that uh, last week, both on our radio broadcast and in our parking lot. Um, Such a reminder that the church is more than a building, uh, that it's us as the people of God. And oh my goodness, these last months, you, dear people of God, have shown such faithfulness in being the church, and we're so grateful for it. Uh, so grateful for the way of uh, of your support and the outpouring of generosity that we've seen from so many of you. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, just as we do every week, we remind you that your gifts can be mailed to P.O. Box 69, dropped off at our church offices, and uh, you can also visit uh, wadinaemmanuel.org to explore electronic giving options at this time. Uh, We have a special opportunity for electronic giving in the next uh, 40 days or so. Uh, Any electronic gifts that are made, either giving by text or uh, giving on uh, our website or through our our website opportunities to give, will be matched. Um, So every dollar you give, uh, 50 cents will be matched, up to $2,000. So in the next 40 days, if we receive $4,000 in electronic gifts, we will receive an additional 2000 for a $6,000 impact that will be split between our general fund and then we'll reach back and support some of those missions of the month, those ministry partners that uh, were not able to get a full offering from us or full financial support because of uh, the COVID-19 crisis. So what a great opportunity. Um, you can go to our website to learn more about that 40-day opportunity. Go to wadinaemmanuel.org to explore those electronic giving options. Our worship service continues as we sing together hymn number 716 in your ELW hymnals, Lord of all nations, grant me grace, ELW number 716.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love, through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Together we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We join together in prayer for the church, the world, and all those in need. Merciful God, in love you created us, and in love you sustain us day after day. So it is with confidence that we bring our prayers to you, knowing that you will hear and respond. We pray for those who are estranged from spouse or family, friends or neighbors, who find it difficult to forgive past wrongs done to them. Lord, in your mercy, We pray for those who for years have carried feelings of guilt or regret for something they did or something they neglected to do, who find it difficult to ask for forgiveness or forgive themselves. Lord, in your mercy. For those who find themselves far away from you, struggling to overcome their doubts or disillusionment and who wonder how to find their way back. Lord, in your mercy. For those who find themselves far from home, serving their country through military service, who are faced with difficult situations, danger, and discouragement, we pray especially for Max Labar, James Close, Victor Barbado, Joel Bertelson, Sean Evans, Joe Holwiger, Samantha Holwiger, Karsten Jennings, John Close, Eric Naley, and Jacob Radabo. Lord, in your mercy. For those trying to cope with serious illness or injury and who long for your miraculous intervention, we pray especially for Ken Anderson, Sherry Anderson, Ryan Andrews, Sharon Boleyn, Charles Carlson, Joe Hollerman, Edna Honeycutt, Gary Johnson, Leroy Christine, Peggy Louine, Connie Rock, Craig Reese, Dorothy Teal, Dennis Teedy, Gary Burnt, Joan Clark, Jerome Fisher, Doreen Johnson, Robert Kiffey, Betty Kittleson, Missy Lorenz, Kaya Nurberg, Jean Tolligson, Betty Wiedrich, Dick Wood, Eugene Wood, Dolores Yorick, and all those we name in our hearts before you. Lord, in your mercy. For those wrestling with decision-making in this time of uncertainty, parents, caregivers, healthcare workers, public servants, school administrators, staff and teachers, business owners, and ministry leaders. Lord, in your mercy. For the many others in our world who are suffering this day from grief or loneliness, hunger, poverty, or violence, we lift up to you, especially Donna and Leroy Christine and family as they mourn the death of Donna's brother, Duane, and Leroy's brother, Wally. 
Mike and Nikki Sartori and family as they mourn the death of Mike's mother, Kay. The family and friends of Betty Judkins. Lord, in your mercy. Sustain all those who look to you in hope and strengthen us, your people, so that we may be a light to all those who find themselves in the shadows. We pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please take a few moments to share a message of peace with the people in your household or a text message, email, or other note sent to friends, family, and other loved ones. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn is ELW 714, O God of Mercy. worshiping with us this morning. We encourage you to stay connected with us throughout the week by signing up for Remind notifications, following us on Facebook, or subscribing on YouTube. For more information on how to connect with us, please visit wadinaemmanuel.org.